Well, good good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Apologies for being late. Uh, hi there, Millbilly and uh, Dr. Sukman. Hi there. Thanks for yes, joining me no. again. And and I have calmed down a wee bit. I was uh, I was pretty irate earlier. It took me twenty five minutes to get served at the bank today because they've got. <laughs> four desks and one person on a monday morning you know and it's uh, but you know there, there's no point getting upset about it it's it's what it is and you're queuing outside so i think i think you know the people inside they, they don't realize that there's a whole load of people queuing outside or at least they can't be Correct. bothered or maybe it's just an excuse you know it's it's covid so therefore everybody has to take ages you know but uh, yes anyway anyway i've i've calmed down and uh as i say great to see you and um likewise and i don't yes. know if you any any thoughts on that uh, manual garcia case certainly I, I i think it's it's encouraging that the court of appeals are seem to be um you know taking taking things seriously you know taking their job seriously and, you know and giving proper opinions uh, you know, when it comes to these cases and not just, you know, having the, the, the courage, having the bravery to, you know, to say to the other court, you know, if you get it wrong, we're not going to mm -hmm. let it go. Yeah. Yep. Okay, okay. Um, a question. The, um, as you can see, the, um, the thumbnail of the video is of um, Rav Fors. Two of them. <laughs> one, one, one in the one in the salvage yard, and one, one in uh, and one, and in, one, one in evidence. Garage. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, we've got the picture of the Rav Four, and I'll I'll pop it up. And uh, it was just a, a question that I that I had, which um, hopefully you were able to to explain for me. Um, so I'm going to pop it up. Uh, I'm going to do that and if we go to there so highlighted here around the um where the key goes in uh, yes. was was where they they identified item um a 23 23 which was <coughs> what was a 23 it was a partial dna profile found on the rear tailgate of the rav4 but it was like a, a palm print, as as if somebody's pushed the door. Yeah. Yes. Somebody, somebody with with blood on their hands has pushed the door. And at trial, Ken Kratz claims claimed in it was it his opening arguments that we found a, a handprint of Stephen Avery at the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or blood. Yeah. Yes. yes, you mentioned blood. Yeah, they are, they also tell Stephen that in his November 9th interview, they found a bloody palm print. Yeah, but but by they, they would they have tested it by then? No, 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 no. They didn't find out it was his blood into the tent. That it wasn't his blood. That it was uh, all the other blood was his. Oh right, yes, yeah, that, that had been planted, and 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 that is isn't isn't it bizarre how all the other blood is so obviously planted? There's no way that this this blood on the back has been planted because you it's almost impossible well it's very yeah, very well, difficult to plant fingerprints and palm prints isn't it where's yes. the blood when it's on avery's you don't see it in the picture so it's in the blue the, the right picture but not the left one yeah it could be it could be the light couldn't it you know how the um, no no i don't buy that no it, it's red. Mm. But the mm, which which would which would go along with this idea that that's 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 trees as rav four and, and this is a decoy rav four. <laughs> no, they're, they're taken at the same place. Well, one's one's inside the uh, crime lab and the other one's outside. Yeah. But you can yeah. see you can see from the colours. They're completely different contrasts. They're different picture settings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but and, and we won't go down that particular rabbit hole if if, if that's okay with uh, you, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> what what, <laughs> I, what I really wanted to ask. No, no. Uh, <laughs> we love multiple rats. 
yes, yeah. The um, this this palm print, which is a, obviously it's a it's a partial print, um, but but you can get um, you, you you can identify using palm prints, can't you? We we saw in that yes. um, Fear City that that documentary about the mafia how they managed to get hold of one of the guys, not through his fingerprints, but it was his palm print, which had touched the inside door handle. And that's yes. how they managed to identify. So, so palm prints are just as useful as, as fingerprints. But of course, they, they weren't able to match the palm print to, to any of the, um, if you like, the, the suspects, the ones that were, for example, uh, Steve and Brendan, and also the ones that, for example, Dean and Jerry named as possible perpetrators or were they well we got all the avery's all the dassies scott bloodhorn lincoln colburn those who submitted their prints and fingerprints right. but they did we don't know if they tested lincoln colburn's test prints to the car they were only looking for prints on the box right so who knows Okay, so so the um, hopefully Zelna will get her hands on this particular piece of evidence and obviously be able to um, sort of um, investigate further, d develop further the, the evidence here. Is that is that what she's hoping to do? Is it a case of there's DNA in the blood, which you know? Yeah, they weren't able to get a full profile from the, the DNA of the blood here. No, partial. A partial. No, got a partial. Uh, Sheree, Cohen, Sheree Cohen didn't actually state how many uh, loci came right. up, but it was clear that it couldn't have belonged to both uh, Stephen, Brendan, and it didn't belong to Teresa. Otherwise, yeah. she would have said so. So yes. you've got uh, an unknown uh, genomic profile on the back door of the RAV, as well as a uh, partial palm print so that's pretty damning evidence mm -hmm. but nothing was done mm -hmm. and is it sorry do, do we know that it's definitely human blood uh well she was able to extract um some alleles from right. the uh, dna sample and they use um genetic loci which are human in origin right. so yeah it would most definitely have been human human DNA that was extracted. Well, that, that, that's huge, isn't it? If you've got somebody's blood, and it's yes. not Steve's, and it's not Teresa's, what 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 the hell did they do in terms of investigation? Uh, nothing. Ah, ignored it. Ah, because it pointed yeah. away from Steve. Exactly. Yes, and Brendan. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That stands to reason, I suppose. That's typical of them, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Um, so, so presumably, then it's a case of um, find out, get a get a full profile from that, and then and then who are we left with that 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 that, that, that could be the the DNA and who couldn't be? So, so it couldn't. It definitely couldn't have been Teresa's, and it definitely couldn't be Steve or Brendan's. That uh, Shariko. Basically, Sheree Cohane has got the profile, as like Neil Billy said, <clears throat> of quite a, quite a lot of the family members, uh, and also we've got Teresa Horbach's pap smear. So because we know the allelic profile of those um, uh, individuals, if the alleles had matched, she would have said, I can't exclude yeah. Stephen, Brendan, or Teresa. Mm -hmm. yeah. The mere factor that she said, no, it's not them, uh, yeah. is very, very damning indeed. Because remember, that's what the state said. The state said that Stephen had left his blood uh, in the Toyota RAV4 because he was actively bleeding. So now you've got another person who's bleeding, mm -hmm. who's left the palm print as well as their blood, and they don't know who it belongs to. Mm -hmm. Wow, mm. it's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, it needs to be uh, be investigated because, as 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 you as you pointed out, the investigation, when 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 it, anything that 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 would that would 
exclude Steve. No, oh. you know, you don't, you don't swab, you don't swab the rest, rest of the engine bay because that could uh, prove or the, the or the the hood latch or yes. the prop or anything. The, in, the, in, the catch inside. So we got uh, DNA profile on the outside of the rav that has nothing to do with Teresa Hallbach, Stephen Avery, Brendan Dassey, or anybody. And then we also have three profiles inside the car. Yeah. Stephen Avery's, Teresa Hallbox, and A13. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can see, as what Mill Billy explained, uh, anything that potentially could have been exculpatory uh, for Stephen and Brendan, they didn't pursue. Uh, and yeah. that, that is a shocking omission. And it was only by a fluke that uh, one of the um, attorneys questioned um, Cherie Colhane on A23. Otherwise, mm. we never would have got to known about it because uh, she actually talked about A23 in two separate reports. And uh, it was over uh, a length of time. And she just said in one report, oh, we extracted DNA, but it wasn't sufficient to get a profile. We only got a partial profile. That's it. End yeah. of story. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, and so you can clearly see that uh, Sharif Cohen uh, was not interested in trying to determine who actually belonged to A23. And don't forget the blood in the quarry, CX. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, Gentlemen, um, moving on to Mill Billy. Um, we, um, I listened all the way through um, the Dean Strang closing argument. And as I say, the thing that struck me immediately was that quite early on, um, he, he kind he, well, he mentions Bobby Dassey by name. Um, how he was able to do that was to say that, you know, they, they weren't able to um, mm -hmm. put forward alternative suspects as as, as the perpetrators, but I, I I thought that was that was particularly telling that uh, that that he mentioned Bobby Dassey. Um, I mean, seriously, guys, do do we think that if Bobby Dassey did it, he did it by himself? If Bobby Dassey didn't do it, why doesn't he talk to Zellner? Yeah, well, but if you ain't got nothing to hide and you hear him telling Dieterine, I just want to clear my name. There's my your name, chance. Yeah. yeah. There's your chance. Yeah. What are you hiding? Who but are you protect? Who are you protecting? Yeah, yeah. But we just, we, we don't seriously think that it would have been him by himself, do we? I doubt it. I doubt it because the crime the crime has multiple levels to it. It's not just only a murder uh, per se and a brutal one at that, but it's also the planting of forensic mm -hmm. evidence all pointing towards um, Stephen Avery. Mm -hmm. So one has to wonder, was he sophisticated enough to do the murder and plant all the, all the things against his uncle? Um, I highly doubt it. I mm -hmm. highly doubt it. Yeah, yeah. Now, the other thing I thought was very interesting was when Dean talks about the um, the fact that, you know, although the jury have, have got an, an immense immense power and, and responsibility here, they can't they can't solve the case. All they can do is pass judgment, which yes. um, I, I, I thought it was an interesting closing argument. It was um, you know, typical typical Dean. Dean Strang, wasn't it? You know, he was. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was talking about at one point. Was was he not? He was talking about the story, if you like. You know, I, I, did it, did I pick that up right, Mill Billy? Yeah. Uh, and, and the. But. And the fact that that you know the state's story just just doesn't add up, does it? No, no. not at all. No. But what I thought was even more interesting, um, it was it was a much shorter video, and it was it was after the 
the jury came back with this guilty verdict and the one of the reporters i don't know who it was it sounded a little bit maybe like anjanet levy asked asked them do you like stephen avery i believe you're right that it was angela to levy yep and the answer was yeah right. the answer was yes wasn't it you know and and i i thought that was that was really really interesting because you know for, for a lot of a lot of lawyers that they would have said well that's that's not for me to to talk about you know well and he that's, said, you know i spent a lot of time with this man what's not like that about him he's he i mean speak for himself what he said but it always bothers me every time that dean strain is asked do you believe stephen avery is innocent yeah and he always says i don't believe that's the right question yeah yes um just echoing what Milbilly said, there was uh, an interview that uh, the lawyers had done uh, much later, including the lawyers that represented him in his exoneration case. And Dean Strang actually said, you know, I hope that he actually is guilty because yeah. the mere factor of sending someone to prison twice for wrongful conviction is pretty devastating. And I thought, jeepers, that's a pretty, that's a pretty risky thing to say, uh, you know, trying to maintain that your client is innocent. Um, but the other thing, though, um, was that Dean actually did feel a little bit uncomfortable pointing the finger at uh, Lenk and Colburn, you know, like the police force, because um, that actually gave uh, law enforcement, that actually gave the state a big leg up. Mm. And they used that as an argument in front of the jury and the judge, you know, to say, would your cops do this? Would your cops kill Teresa Hallbach? So even though um, the Stevens attorneys went to great lengths to say, hey, look, we're not implicating them in the murder, mm. I don't think that point went across too well. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if you accept one thing, you have to accept the whole gamut, which clearly was not the case. Well, you got to remember Kratz got to counter after Dean and Jerry and he picks apart everything, says, so what if the key was planted? Mm -hmm. You have to take this risk. You have, you think your cops, your cops did this and you're going to be convicting. If you, you make this man not guilty, you're going to put in everybody else's mind that you think the cops did it too. Yep. Which and walk out, walking out of that jury room, they all have been fucked. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, yet, they the even then, yep. even then, they still have initially voted in favour of Steve. Yes, and and mind you, mind you, that's without a whole heap of uh, forensic experts on on his team. Mm -hmm. yep. You could imagine, you could imagine if he had the same representation that Kathleen Zona had mm -hmm. or has. Yeah, um, they would have found him not guilty. I'm sure mm -hmm. of it. They would have found him not guilty yes. because. Well, the, the the forensic scientists put up a really good case as to why that forensic evidence was indeed planted. Yeah. I'm going to play something. Tell me if you can hear this. Well, let me, uh, do you want to just screen share it? Can you guys hear that? A little bit faint. 5.20 p.m. on the 31st, I think I heard. Smoke from the burn barrel was blowing right in my face, so I had told Earl to move ahead. Well, it's Robert Fabian. Yeah. Stating that they had pulled up between the garage and the trailer. And the smoke. Here, let me share my screen so I can show you this. Sure. Hold on a minute. Let me get this up first. Sure. I mean, the thing that, that struck me was as well was when Dean was summing up was he pointed out the fact that, you know, the, the, the people that they called as witnesses, you could see the All honesty right. in them. I'm ready when you are. There we go. All right. 
This is the approximation where Stephen Avery's burn barrel was. Yep. This is the approximate location where the golf cart was when Robert Fabian and Earl drove down the road and pulled up there, got out, and went to talk to Stephen because he was burning the brush that Redont had placed over here. Yep. Because if, well, I mean, if you look... Oh, it, there, bring, there's a brush pile here. Mm -hmm. There's a brush pile here. There's a brush pile here. There used oh. to be a brush pile over here, but it's not there anymore because Stephen Avery burned it. Yep. Now, Robert Fabian states that they stopped over here between the garage and the trailer. And he asked Earl to move the golf cart because the smoke from his burn barrel was getting in his eyes. <laughs> now, it's 124 feet from here to the burn barrel. Yeah. Wow. Where'd the other one? All right. And I got another one. Now, the distance between his burn barrel... And the golf cart is 126 feet. And the distance between mm -hmm. where his fire pit is. Mm -hmm. Why isn't it coming up there? 40 feet. Yeah. yeah. Now, where do you think this smoke was coming from? Yeah. His burn barrel or the fire pit? The yeah. fire pit. Yeah. So if you're burning... Burning. My question is, a lot of, a lot of smoke. why didn't Dean and Jerry question him about that? I think just so many things going on that it's, it's again, it's just one of those things that, that that just slipped by, isn't it? You know, they dropped the ball, if you like. You know, I mean, we were lucky, as you were saying, in in a in a twenty three, Kratz tries to tell them in the is it, is it in opening argu arguments in the opening. That st there's Steve's blood on the on the back of the back of the Rav Four, and Jerry's yeah. hold on a sec. Where where we 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 we've nothing about that. Where is his blood? And and was that how they sort of? Uh, and there's a recent case here in California. This guy uh, burned this lady in his backyard. It took him two days. Yeah, he used gasoline as the accelerant. Yep. His neighbors stated that they seen him burning something in his backyard two days. Yep. Well, they went back years later, searched his property. Not only did they find bones, they found biological material too. Right. So he took two days to burn a body yeah. and didn't yep. destroy it. And Stephen Avery did this in five hours. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yes. Even less. Yep. Well, although, although is there um, is is there testimony that as Eisenberg did detect a smell of fuel from the from the remains? No, that was that was from a plastic tub. Mm -hmm. Light, right? A tub. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's Millbilly. We certainly know that that it, it takes takes way way too long. Uh, you know, to 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 get rid of a body held in that uh, Laurie and uh, Chad Daybell case, they actually dug up, didn't they? The, the two bodies, and one of them, he they, he had attempted to uh, to burn, oh, yeah. hadn't he? You yeah, know, and you know, attempt to entirely just just can't they, be done. They wrapped JJ up in a bunch of stuff, put uh, boards over him, and then buried him. And he, whoever did that to both them kids. What they did to Tylee is way worse. What they did to JJ, it's still yeah. horrific and yeah, unfathomable. But yeah, yeah. Quickly, quickly. One of the one of the, one of our commenters comment comment commenters has questioned smelter, and of course smelter is mentioned in the aluminium or aluminium smelter is mentioned in the Sikaki letter. There is an aluminium smelter. On the Avery Salvage Yard, but it wasn't, it wasn't functional. Used. It wasn't yeah. functional. It wasn't used. They, they fact, actually checked the aluminium smelter, and yeah. also there was a wood one yeah. as well, yeah. and it was not used. So they they actually checked it, 
yeah. uh, which is very, very interesting because um, uh, wasn't there a confidential informant who this, rang up law enforcement and uh, said, no, they, they, they contacted the police department, which then contacted uh, Manitowoc, which then informed the people in charge and they informed them people that they are already well aware of that whole situation. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Milbilly, am I correct? It was Kim Ducat who was a confidential informant. Kim Ducat, which is uh, Stephen's cousin, I believe. Yeah. It's written on a paper. Her name is crossed out and it says CI written in pen. So correct. I don't know what else CI would stand for. Well, yeah. Yeah. And am I right in saying that the the uh, actual investigator that, that was that was brought in to investigate the smelter actually climbs inside? Uh, or is it or was it there a foot opening and he was only able to shine a light yeah. inside? But it was it, it, that's right. He climbed up to the top of it, didn't it, where there was a hole in yeah. order in order to see see in. But it, yeah. it hadn't been used for quite a while, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. They 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 would have used it uh, to melt down uh, car parts from you know that they strip from the cars from the mm -hmm. engines and they just melt it and collect it like an ingot. No, yes, not even yeah. aluminum. They could have did that to copper, aluminum, yes. gold too. Yes, yes. I mean, the temperature that a smelter gets is well high enough to burn a body. But yeah, if you introduce the body into a lick, it, it you're going to have an explosion. Mm. All that moisture, yes, and the heat. Yeah, just, just what happens when you throw water in a fryer? Yep. Mm. Yeah. 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 Correct. Correct. And of course, um, as Bridget has quietly pointed out, there was a smelter where um, Scott Taddeck worked. But I yeah, think I, th I think I think we're beginning to see, aren't we, that we've got these bone fragments in burn barrels, yeah, in piles in the in the you know the wooded area at the Manitoc gravel pit. I think yeah, I think I think, I think I think it's pretty pretty clear that you know yes, it might have taken a, a fair while to. To, to decompose and three of them piles in the Manitowoc quarry two of them are adjacent to each other the other one is quite a distance yeah still over 1500 feet from Stephen right. Avery's burn pit yeah so so would that suggest a uh, two people involved in the operation of trying to burn the you know destroy Possibly. the body and, and the fact that, 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 that there's no mid torso at all is there well sorry we got there's so much missing, so. Correct. There's yeah. about 60%. Like I said, if, if, if Zellner could have got the bones, she'd be able to compare the cut marks. Not only to try to get the DNA from them, she'd be able to compare cut marks. So if the cut marks match all the bones in all the locations, that means we are dealing with one person. Yeah. Correct. The, um, the, the issue that was raised is anatomical continuity. Right? right. So, as Mill Billy just said, if you can match the saw marks and the cut marks at different locations and you identify them to be the same cutting instrument, that highly likely means that you have one individual who's been cut to pieces and spread over multiple locations. But you see, that evidence is now potentially gone, mm. right? Because now you can't, you can't do like uh, Chris Palinick did stick everything under a very high-powered microscope and do trace analysis. I'm just right? saying, if, if, if Dean and Jerry had this audio and they didn't do anything with it, they really dropped the ball. Correct. Well, again, but, you, you know, you, you come to the, um, the fact that they never picked up on the fact that there was not this uh, there were the seven DVDs, but there was also a CD that had this index. Um, and of course, what it was, it was just a piece of paper that was that was put in over the whole load of other. Is it called Discovery? Mm -hmm. That they gave them just before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. They they tried yes. to play off that what they found on the computer was nothing. They didn't they didn't they didn't seize the computer until April twenty first, two thousand six. Mm -hmm. Fassbender said it was of little evidentiary value. 
either him or Kratz said it. Kratz, it was, yeah. it, it, they, were, they, were, they were to them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it was it was labeled it was labeled the Dassey computer. I think they were trying to associate the computer with Brendan. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, did they not do an um a forensic analysis of Steve's computer and also Teresa's Teresa's computer? And, yes. ran, and they, as you say, they labeled it Brendan's computer. And they, they took Stephen's computer way before they took Brendan's. They yes. got Teresa's laptop the, the night of the third, mm. along with the hairbrush with hair, her personal journal, her financial records, and her laptop. Funny thing and, is, if you, leak, if you go through these queso photos that we got, uh, maybe, I don't know how long ago, the last lot of photos are all the bones they gave back. Mm. You can see that they have everything on the table piled up. They went through everything. Yes. Yep. There were a lot, a lot of bags. So a lot of bags on that table. Daughter should be able, whatever they have left, she should be able to determine what's missing if it's all categorized like it should be. But we are talking about Calumet and Manitowoc, so. Mm. Right, but aliens could have took it. Yes, but <laughs> but the issue the issue is whether they've messed everything up, right? So it it yes. only makes sense. I agree with me, Billy. It only makes sense if they categorise where all the bones had come from, right? But if they've completely mixed everything up, say the Horbach family has the bones, yeah. say they've, they've kept them. If they're all jumbled up, you can't tell where they've come from, right? Unless they've coded the bones themselves. Yeah. Of this came from the Manitowoc County gravel pit. This mm -hmm. came from Yonder Burn Barrel Number Two. This came from Stephen Avery's burn area, right? So if they haven't categorised that, uh, it's pretty well close to useless, right? Mm -hmm. But if they still got the bones, they can forensically test them to see if you've got one individual or more and whether those bones are indeed from a female and human mm -hmm. so they are very important correct so there's still evidentiary value in those cremains as long oh, as yeah. they didn't cremate them anymore Again. if they just if they just got the bones and then <laughs> yes. buried them we have some hope but yes. who knows what they did with them if they, I, um, I, I, I can't I can't imagine why you would want to further cremate bones that have uh, already been cremated. Maybe, maybe they wanted to, you know, they sell them little urns. So maybe they wanted to put them, keep the part of Teresa with them forever. Correct. If that in fact is Teresa. Hmm. <laughs> so if they if they uh, took those cremains and, and brought them to a crematorium hmm. and they either re-cremated them or stuck them in a cremulator well, to the grind question them is, to powder. What, what did the white teeny funeral home do before they gave them back to the hall box? Did they process them like they would normally receiving? I mean. You don't um, you don't give bones back, right? You no. cremulate them. You, put, you grind them. Mm -hmm. You yes. do not give bones back because you never know, right, what – what they may harbor. So what they normally do after a cremation event, well, I can attest machine. I can attest when my father died, he was cremated. I got the or back, I opened up the bag and there was still big chunks of bone in there too. Mm. So whoever did their job didn't do a very thorough didn't job. Didn't do a good job. No. No. It all depends so, on where like the facility too, because we're talking. It's been fifteen years since this happened. So, yes, I think you know if you're going to do it in a sensitive manner, you would have uh, ground them and put them in an urn, mm -hmm. so it's sealed. You know, rather than you're not going to give back a pile of bones in plastic bags. No, it was completely a, tasteless. My father was inside a plastic bag inside a tin. Cheapest. And then my, we eventually got him in a gold urn, solid gold. Hmm. Yeah. Again, 
Millville without proper documentation. We can only speculate what happened. It felt weird driving home with my father sitting next to me in the next seat. <laughs> yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah. It would. Well, for 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 three or four months there, we had uh, father-in-law's uh, urn container up in the uh, up, up in up in the lounge because uh, she she made a point of telling me. By the way, that's uh, that's that's my dad. So just just leave it alone. It's I know it's there. <laughs> Just leave it alone. You know, that's, that's, that's fine, Bill. You know, he, he, it's not as if he's going to choose what's on the telly. So you, 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 you can rest there, fine. You know, just, uh, yeah, but just but chill out. But, but doesn't this demonstrate, guys? Just another mm. how sloppy this whole investigation has been, uh, right from from the start, right, right to even now, uh, that w you and I, and all of us, are speculating what may have happened here, what may have happened there. Rather than getting straight facts, so we know, there's so many things that we still do not know. Yeah, I mean, the, the bottom line was that the end justified the means as far as, um, you know, getting Stephen Avery's lawsuit all, all done and dusted. I, I mean, you know, I speculated earlier, didn't I? You know, if, if, we, if we think that Bob is involved, I don't think it was him by himself. Um, and, 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 I, and I think that the, uh, the timing of it was too convenient to be a coincidence well, that, that I, I think, not not um, Vogels, but I think Kasurix, Kasurik having to appear and give yeah. a deposition. I yeah. think that was. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know about what Millbilly thinks, but to me, the most fascinating part of the case, and because remember, we're talking about what the lawyers could have done better, twenty twenty hindsight. Uh, mm -hmm. To me, the turning point of the case was the um, testimony of Bobby Dassey and also of Scott Tadich. Yeah. Uh, and when one the thinks about The funny thing it, is about Bobby Dassey, he's the first one to testify. Mm. <laughs> yes. other, than, other than any law enforcement. Yeah. We got Bobby Dassey, what, uh, Herman, uh, I can't remember his damn name, uh, Brett Bow. I'm forgetting somebody. Yeah, O'Connor. We, we can check. We can check. O'Connor and one more person. But mm. if you if you look at what Dean Strang said, he goes, "We were rather surprised by that testimony, right? Yeah. They weren't expecting it." And no, um, the fact that the jury we, asked to review their testimony, and the judge was like, "Well, you got to specify on uh, which parts you want us to go get for you." Mm. Correct. Correct, and and to me, to me, um, the turning point of the case was his testimony and also Scott Tadich's testimony, uh, and um, it still does my head in when you think that Bobby Dassey, um, his brother Brendan Dassey, got charged with all those horrible crimes. His own brother, mm -hmm. he's and he testified against his own uncle, mm -hmm. and uh, what is bizarre is that his future brother-in-law, Scott Tadich, also testified against Stephen by saying how big the fire was. Now, you know that um, Ken Kratz needed to have a big whopping fire because oh. he knew to cremate a human being to bone fragments, uh, you need a huge fire with plenty of fuel and plenty of time, yep. neither of which Stephen Avery had, right? And it's a pity that um, Stephen Avery um, didn't have Dahan on his team because yeah. Dahan would have shown demonstrations of cadavers being burnt in open pits and yep. in burn barrels. And, and he, it, said, he, 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 said, he said, yeah, he said, if you want to burn a human being into bone fragments, you need direct heat on the yes. body all the exactly. time. Yeah. And the vessel to do it is a burn barrel, mm -hmm. right? So if you cut a person up into smaller fragments, you've got a, a greater surface area for the direct heat. And if you burn a person sequentially, pieces by piece, and you look at the Manitowoc County gravel pit, what, what did Millbilly say there is? There are several piles, mm. right? Several piles. And you have the state's forensic anthropologist who said they contain cut, burnt, human fragments yep right so mm -hmm. all you had to do was gather it all up work out what the volume was 
and see if it actually fit in a burn barrel and a bit of wood. So therefore you know that one particular victim may have been cut and burnt sequentially and then dumped over a period of time. Horrific, yeah. but it goes to show that a burn barrel had the ability to convert a human being into bone fragments. Oh. And of course, what do we find in yonder burn barrel number two? Mm. Cut, yeah. burnt, human mm -hmm. bone fragments. Oh, yeah. And that's astounding. Yeah, sorry, Milbury, you were you were gonna you were gonna say something there? Yeah, I forgot. Not to worry. <laughs> sorry. I've got a I've, sorry. I got a I, I got a garden incinerator uh, just before lockdown. Um, and I was amazed how effective it is. And it's just a small one. You know, it looks like a little dustbin, you know? Mm -hmm. And you just, you know, it's got holes at the bottom and it, it's just brilliant. You know, you, you, you come back and, you know, the, you know, the, the amount of heat it generates is, is fantastic, but it radiates back, doesn't it? You know, the, and yeah, as you say. Correct. And they glow they, when they're extremely hot. I mean, I don't know a burn barrel. Milbilly, oh. do you have one? I've burned okay. burn barrels all the time. Yes, they get cherry red. Yep. Yeah, this Correct. thing of mine, I've only I've only done like some uh, you know, now that like, gar garden stuff. You know. Um, well, since I moved back to the city, I haven't had a fire in quite a long time. But when I lived out in the country, we had fires all the time. Yeah. Like uh, for instance, we had a. I had just moved out to the country. And uh, we decided to, well, I decided to burn everything that I didn't longer need. So I burned <laughs> uh, two couches, a uh, futon, a whole bunch of stuff. But we, we and Paul Capaldi's bed. We threw the first couch oh. on the fire, <laughs> and we had the other couch sitting probably twenty feet from it. Yeah. Well, this fire got so hot it melted the siding on my buddy's father's automotive shop which was 300 feet oh. from the fire the couch that was sitting 20 feet from the fire started on fire the fire was so hot hmm. when you burn furniture you could get rid of a body yeah but what <laughs> Stephen Avery had no way no no and you can see you can see um uh, Mill Billy and Paul when when uh, Trooper Reese took the photographs, there's a distinct lack of uh, uh, burnt fuel all around yes. the, the burn burn oh, yeah. area. Yeah. The yeah. ash is contained within the small area, and that's that's indicative that there was not a lot of fuel there. And when Dahan and uh, other people do uh, simulations where they burn cadavers, they actually jam pack fuel all around the cadaver. So mm -hmm. the fuel source is directly on them, and yeah. they jam more stuff on, so the the heat radiates back. Yeah. And I, they did an experiment with a pig, right? And I think the fire went for one or two days mm -hmm. in a burn pit. There was nothing left but fragments. But yeah. they used a huge amount of fuel source, and they packed it. They put the pig. I know it sounds great. They put it in a blanket. They wrapped it yeah. up, right? So yeah. When the fat caught on fire, everything catches on fire yes. and the heat is contained within, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So, therefore, it, one, one problem with Stephen's burn pit, as you can see, it's yeah. open, right? Yeah. It's open. The heat, the heat escapes. So, Stephen can't be very good at doing barbecues because all the heat goes out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been reading through Brendan Dashie's trial. Bunch of garbage. Well, I was going to say I'm, I'm going to start looking at the sort of uh, the, the motion that uh, Kathleen Zellner filed, where she, you know, she lists the, the six Brady violations and she, she goes through everything. So I, I'd, I'd like to ask you next week a bit about a bit about those. Um, Millbury, Crystal Ball, Crystal Ball, um, <laughs> Tot Tottenham. They're not doing too badly. They beat. I got told off for saying that they beat Man United. 5-1, it was actually 6-1. So they're pretty high up the league, aren't they? The season yep. just started. So. And <laughs> Villa, Villa, Villa are 
basically top okay everton are actually just just above them in first place you know but for for a team that normally languishes at the bottom of the league we are at the top of the league as in the you know the the, the well being second is it's pretty close to the top isn't it you know so so hey, so first, last and and any any hopes for your tottenham team that they're going to uh, surpass villa and everton i'm optimistic Every optimistic. year, okay. every year we're right there, and then something yeah. happens. And somebody sorry, gets hurt. To, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So sorry to mention this, uh, Doctor, but um, who do you think is going to win the uh, AFL? I tell you what, <laughs> those four teams. Those four teams are. Look, I know I'm going to yeah. get. I know I'm going to get nailed to a cross with this, but no. I hope to God Port win it. I really right. do, and bring it oh, to right. South Australia, and bring it to South Australia, because right. with all the crap that we've had, with yeah. all the COVID nonsense, it'll be awesome if Port can win it. But I have a feeling that I reckon Richmond, they're a pretty dirty team. They're uh -huh. a pretty dirty team, and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do a lot of nasty tactics. To Port to see if they can if they can beat Port, they'll win. Mm. They'll win. I think. So, um, I think the so, other teams are just not quite up to it. So, so we've got Port versus Richmond, and who are the other two then? Uh, Brisbane Lions versus Geelong. Yeah, and that's going to be a really good game too. And it was Geelong that knocked out the Saints. Uh, no, Geelong knocked out oh. Collingwood. That's right. It was the Richmond yeah, that actually beat beat the Saints. Yeah, yes. yeah. Which which for the Saints is you know even to well, get that far into the I last eight was pretty. I good, don't know nothing about AFL, but uh, I'm going with Brisbane. Brisbane, good choice. <laughs> good choice. Um, um, if I could just say, if yeah. I could just say, just I'll change, see. just changing, just getting back on, <laughs> back <laughs> on our topic. Back on All our right. Topic. Um, <laughs> I just want to say, now you think about this, right? Right. Because we're talking about Bobby Dassey. Um, I, I thought you were on about my bed. Huh? What's that? I thought you were on about my bed. I'm oh, no, that's B-E-D, not B-O-D. I don't want to know about your bed. But I was just the, saying. The new one that we've had to get because the old one is broken. <laughs> well, the, the, thing, the thing is this, right? Just getting yeah. serious for a second. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, think about this, right? How coincidental is this? Both Bobby Dassey and Stephen Avery, they see Teresa Horbach come yes. onto the property, right? So both of them see Teresa Horbach come onto the property. Both recall her taking photographs of the uh, maroon van, right? Now, that's where the story completely changes because Stephen says he went out and encountered Teresa Horbach and we know he did because he's got the Auto Trader magazine, which mm -hmm. he brought inside, right? Yep. So I don't think Teresa would have been silly enough to have gone in his trailer, right? So yeah. according to Stephen, he encountered Teresa Horbach. She went in her vehicle. Uh, she got paid, and he gave her, uh, she gave him a magazine, and we know that's correct. Yes. Right? Now, Bobby Dassey, look at what he says. He goes, I saw Teresa walking towards Stephen's trailer. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. notice he doesn't mention Stephen. He doesn't yep. mention an encounter. And he doesn't mention seeing Teresa go actually in Stephen's trailer. So in a way, he's sort of like, he went 50-50. He goes, yeah. well, I didn't see anything nefarious, right? But he counteracted his his uh, his uncle's argument by saying when Steve went back out, he had noticed that his nephew, um, Bobby, had left. Yeah. Right? Left in his blazer, right? Because Stephen came out. But what did Bobby Dassey say? Well, when I went out to go bow hunting after he had his shower, his record shower in three minutes, he goes, um, I didn't see Teresa, but I saw her Toyota RAV4. Oh, yeah. Which is the complete opposite to what Stephen said, right? So now you've got this incredible event. 
you've got Teresa Horbach, Bobby Dassey, Stephen Avery, and Scott Tadich, all in the same time frame. Yep. One of them is telling a lie. Mm-hmm. It's either Stephen Avery or Bobby Dassey. All right. Well, I got something. Just what if? What if the propane guy nope. and what if the bus driver are seeing Bobby Dassey or somebody exiting the property? Even Blaine seen. Well, Blaine testified. Well, his affidavit states that he's seen Bobby Dassey driving a vehicle, mm-hmm. not his blazer. No. Nope. Now, what if the propane driver is being truthful? He's seen that car drive by. Mm-hmm. Nobody asked him who was in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's Avery Road. You're not driving 50, 60 miles per hour. No. You no. see the car drive past you. Not to mention, you're approaching a busy road. You're going to stop. You'd see who's in the car. Yeah. Right. And this the this questions now. that weren't asked that are yep. key. Correct. Because this now, this now, guys, brings into play uh, Bobby Dassey's alibi, which is Scott Tadich, right? Mm. Now, according to Bobby Dassey, Bobby Dassey said he turned right mm-hmm. on 147. Stephen said Teresa Horbach turned left yes. on 147, right? Mm-hmm. But it, when you think about the alibi, Scott Tadich was going west down towards where Teresa was going. So yeah. who's telling the truth? Yeah. Did Bobby Dassey actually turn left? And followed Teresa Horbach. So, in my opinion, I reckon he followed her out. Yeah. And that's why he had to say, no, 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 no. I still I still saw the Toyota RAV4 on the property. Yep. Because how was he going to explain? Oh, by the way, I followed her out. And uh, the reason why I followed her out is that I wanted her to photograph my blazer to put it into Auto Trader magazine. Yeah. And that's what, remember, remember what Brendan. his brother said? Brendan. His brother, Brendan. He was mad because she wouldn't he was mad the blazer because in the he couldn't get the blazer. And you're thinking, wait a minute, who's got the blazer back then? It's yeah. his brother. Yeah. Right? So it all these little factoids, when you work it out on a timeline, actually make perfect sense. And that's why Bobby had to get an alibi from yeah. Scott to sort of say, hey, save my bacon and I'll save yours. Yeah. 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 Completely, Listen. completely bizarre. Yeah. Listen, it's been great as usual. As I say, I'm going to be looking at some some new, um, the, 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 the latest Kathleen Zellner filing. And I've already got some questions lined up for next week. So, uh, so you know, um, I'm going to keep you pair on your toes as long as you're happy to uh, <laughs> come and help me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's always always appreciated mill billy um uh you better go and get some sleep although you don't seem to be yawning at all and the cough has completely gone so we're very pleased to see you fully recovered and uh, and at your best um dr silkman uh likewise always great to see you i'm Thank going to you. say cheerio and gentlemen well. and, and mill catch you soon thanks again and thank, thank you. you everybody for joining thank you so much in. cheers Later. bye for now